Wales has a long history of religious revivals that have transformed the cultural and political landscape over the past 400 years. Religious innovation like the Welsh-born Calvinistic Methodism and engagement with theological movements going on all across the world was so commonplace that the nonconformist chapels that housed these movements are sometimes referred to as the National Architecture of Wales. There's an estimated 6,200 of these chapels all across the nation, and today we're going to talk about these Welsh nonconformist chapels in terms of how they operated as family organizations by taking a look at the history of one of the earliest congregations based at Kilgwyn Chapel in Llangibby in Cardiganshire, which formed some time before 1654 when their first chapel was built. My name is Di Davis of Genial Cymru, and let's start at the upper levels of the chapel, with the ministers. Before Kilgwyn even had a chapel, the congregation met, often in secret and under threat of persecution, at the home of the Puritan Reverend John Jones of Llwyn Rhys. He's known as the founder of nonconformity in Cardiganshire. His co-minister, Reverend David Edwards, was a relative of his wife, Margaret and many of Kilgwyn's ministers have some connection to this family. For example, in the mid-1700s, John and Margaret's grandson, Reverend Timothy Davis, preached at the then five chapels that belonged to the Kilgwyn circuit. His co-minister at the time was Reverend Philip Pugh, probably the most notable of Kilgwyn's ministers. Pugh also came from a family long associated with the chapel. His grandfather was Reverend David Jones of Coyd Moor, minister at Kilgwyn at the end of the 17th century, and he was also the Anglican clergyman at Llanbadar Nodwyn. He wasn't an Anglican clergyman for long, though. In 1689, the Oath of Allegiance and Supremacy was reinstated by King William III after he deposed King James II. The oath, among other things, stated that the ruling monarch was the supreme head of the Church of England, which Jones and many of his Puritan colleagues objected to. After refusing the oath, he was expelled from his position as clergyman, and the same happened to his cousin, Reverend Rhys Powell, the vicar of Lampeter, who was also a Puritan who preached at Kilgwyn. So when you research the people preaching at these chapels, especially in the earlier time periods, you often find that they were related by blood and marriage. Family was the framework that upheld many of the nonconformist chapels at their uppermost levels. Family as the framework for chapel life didn't end there, though. For much of the history of these places, outside of the historical religious revivals, like the Methodist revival at the end of the 1700s or the revival of 1904, new members of these chapels were mainly drawn from the descendants of families already associated with them. So generation after generation, you see the same families attending these chapels. And when you look at how historically people would find marriage partners who were like them socially, they often ended up marrying their fellow worshippers. So let's return to Kilgwyn Chapel. I'm in the process of studying all of the families of the 583 children baptized there between 1770 and 1878, and I have hundreds of little family trees, one for each of them. When you study a chapel in this way, you see things in the records that you wouldn't have seen if you were instead looking for individual entries mentioning your ancestors. So for Kilgwyn Chapel, I've only been able to track down a partial copy of the baptism register. The original is in the National Library of Wales, but it hasn't been digitized. How I found the transcript is that I had been googling Kilgwyn one day, and I found a very old website that had a list of broken links to microfilms connected to one of the genealogy websites. So knowing that something related to Kilgwyn existed, I browsed thousands of images until I finally found a transcript of the register. Transcripts are never as good as the original, but you make do with what you can get. This particular transcript only included names and dates, and excluded other information like where each family lived. And if you know Welsh research, you know how common most people's names are, and how invaluable place names are. 
But when you analyze a whole register like this, you can look for new patterns. And what stood out about this one is that they recorded people using the traditional naming system. This means that each person had their first name, then their father's first name, then their grandfather's first name. But even so, when I got to the Davises, which is who I was most interested in, I looked at David, born in 1799, son of David John David and Anne David Thomas, all incredibly common names, and I thought to myself, what sorry person is going to have to figure out who this... Oh wait, I'm that sorry person, that's my five times great-grandfather. So despite the lack of place names, I had a find. And in other parts of the transcript, I found other relatives thanks to this traditional naming system. So the tree that we're looking at now is what I knew before going through the register. And after doing a lot of work with this imperfect transcript, I broke brick walls for the last four of my five times great-grandfather's siblings. I finally found one of my six times great-grandfather's sisters and her descendants, and I found their other sister's daughter and her descendants. I found generation after generation of my ancestors at this chapel. I found those ancestors' friends. I found witnesses to their important life events. I found their spouses' families all wrapped up in this one chapel. But here's the thing, I was very lucky to find even a transcript of this baptism register. The process of finding records for these nonconformist chapels can be really difficult because of how there really wasn't a central authority like the Church of England had regulating how records were taken or maintained. So for example, many of the 18th century baptisms done at Kilgwyn were actually written into the diary of Reverend Timothy Davis. By the 20th century, that diary ended up with Reverend Rhys Jenkin Jones, who was another descendant of Reverend John Jones, and he eventually gave it to the National Library of Wales. But when it comes to Kilgwyn's earliest known register, which was kept by the Reverend Philip Pugh, well, it came to be known by the antiquarians as the Lost Kilgwyn Register. And from what I've found, it's still missing. But there are pieces of it that have survived thanks to a justice of the peace for Cardiganshire, Walter D. Jeremy. His father was Reverend John Jeremy, who was a minister at Caironan Chapel, which was on the Kilgwyn circuit. And his mother was Elizabeth Davis, whose first husband was Reverend Evan Davis of Kilgwyn and Caironan, whose father was the Reverend Timothy Davis. On April 8, 1860, Walter D. Jeremy sat down and transcribed a number of the baptism entries. His transcriptions passed to his nephew, who was a principal of the Presbyterian College at Carmarthen, who then gave them to George Erie Evans, who was a Unitarian minister and antiquarian. And he published a copy of the transcript in the Welsh Gazette in 1904. According to Evans, the original Kilgwyn church book was given by Reverend Evan Lewis of Kilgwyn to a printer and lampeter named Jenkin Davis. It doesn't seem to have been printed, but in 1904, Davis's wife said to George Erie Evans, I don't know where they are. I lent them to somebody. I'll get them back and then I'll send for you. I don't think she ever did send for him. An author in 1923 claimed a different fate to the book, writing that it was given to a D. Jones of Dolai Bach, who gave it to Dr. Phillips of the Neath Lloyd Academy, who gave it to a Reverend D. Morgan of Llanvisen, who never returned to Cardiganshire to give it back. And that's what happened to a lot of these books. They were passed around within families associated with the chapel or among the wider denominational community. They were studied by antiquarians and sometimes they got damaged, destroyed, or lost to history. And that's the challenge with doing this kind of research. But by researching these chapels and the people who worshiped at them, you unlock such an important part of our history and culture. And if you want more people to learn about Welsh history and genealogy, leave a like and a comment as it lets YouTube know to share the video. And why not check out this other video about socially isolated communities like the nonconformists and their marriage practices. Have a great day.